I'm under arrest for failing to signal a lane change? Yes, ma'am. All you're going to do is give them more ammo. I don't know. Law enforcement officers should always go by law whenever they encounter a suspect. But some of them cross their line. Today, we'll be going through these cases where these corrupt cops were humbled by the good one. On September 6, 2023, in New Braunfels, Texas, a woman was pulled over by Officer Patrick Aker. This may seem like a normal traffic stop, but it soon turned out to be much more than that. Steppy The reason for the stop was when the woman later identified as Brittany gave a one-finger salute to Officer Patrick Akers when he was conducting a traffic stop. Officer Akers got offended by her behavior and decided to do this. Thirty-five, two fifty-six. If it's possible, could you make my location? PD two fifty-six. Put me at the thousand forty-nine of Gardenia. Yes, he decided to conduct a traffic stop on Brittany just because of that. He followed her car until Brittany stopped her vehicle on the side of a street. In the past context, Officer Akers was known to be a woman abuser, and Brittany had been one of his victims. So this is that female Trevino. She flicks me off as I'm going back to back of my patrol car, fails the single left hand to go into the left lane. She flicks me off, so I just wanted a second to make contact with her. What Officer Akers claims here is that Brittany flipped him off, meaning that she showed him her middle finger, mostly used as a sign of abuse. Officer Akers must have felt it insulting, but a police officer must have thicker skin. How's it going? Officer Akers, New Braunfels Police Department. Okay. I know who you are. That's fine. Well, the reason why you being... over for flipping you off. No, ma'am. The reason That's why... You are. you are retaliating against me. You turn your sirens on and everything ran over here like a crazy person. Okay. Well, ma'am, the reason why you're being contacted is you failed to signal the lane change when you flicked me off. Okay. Okay. So go ahead and step out of the car. Step out of the car. I have three officers here. He's hurt me before. Please don't let him... Yeah. Could you... Would you mind, Henderson, go ahead and detain her? In cuffs? You're under arrest or fail to signal lane change. I'm under arrest for failing to signal a lane change? Yes, ma'am. I'm under arrest for failing to signal a lane change? Yes, ma'am. 
The encounter quickly escalated as Officer Akers was so eager to show his authority that he asked Brittany to step out of the car to be handcuffed. Brittany was already in so much fear and pressure, she requested the other officers on the scene not to let Officer Akers near her. Surprisingly, she was being charged for failure to change the lane. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You guys just know this is bullshit. You guys just know it is. You guys know it is. You want me to transport or you, you think better? Yeah, Danny, can do Danny, would you mind just transporting? You don't have to do anything else other than transport. I'll be there. PD 2B6. Can you go ahead and uh, get me an extra rotational record? That female is my custody. Uh, I believe this could be Brittany Trevino. What's that? Yeah, she has a driver's license, but... In Texas, failing to signal a lane change is generally considered a traffic violation, not a criminal offense. But what happened with Brittany here was a violation of her rights. No. Yeah, she has a driver's license, but... Well, she, she comes down the street, comes right towards me. As I'm walking back by the car, didn't do nothing, she picks me off. Mm -hmm. And then as she does that, she gets on the lane and fails the single lane change. Mm -hmm. okay. I, you think that's going to be an issue? Huh? You think that's going to be an issue? Given your history, man. Yeah. So, any other person you would write a ticket to, right? Yeah. So, that, that's how you have to treat every every interaction okay. so if you would normally write a ticket for this person for this just because that in the past you've done this this and this right this is something that you would normally write a ticket for then you write a ticket for yeah you want me to go ahead and finish it yes yeah I've Sergeant Scott, who arrived on the scene to observe the whole situation, seemed to understand what was going on. Looking at the desperate and visible fear in Brittany's eyes, he decided to teach a lesson to the ignorant cop. So let's write the ticket. Go about it that way. Sounds good. All you're going to do is give her more ammo. All right. Yep. So write the ticket. Just fill it out. Officer Akers was ordered to let Brittany go with just a citation because no possible law can justify the arrest of Brittany here. What? Help? Okay. What? That's it is. All right, Brittany. All right. You don't like dinner best Well, yours is pretty thin, right? Mm-hmm. What do they mean? You would think, I don't know, because I never tested it. I was always like, and they're like, you can stab right through it. And I'm like, what do you mean you can stab through it? You guys want me to wear this for bullets? Are you kidding me? What do you mean you can stab through it? Are you me? I've never tried. They didn't tell me though that you can stab right through it. Brittany was calmed by Sergeant Scott's decision. She must have felt that not all cops are the same. Some also always go by the law and stop those who make wrong arrests. She was given a citation by Officer Aker, who must be regretting his actions by now. that you flicked the officer off. 
That's not so my question was did you flip the officer off? It all didn't stop there because Sergeant Scott decided to warn Brittany about her actions as well. Either it was a finger salute or a FU sign, it wasn't right at all. But Brittany's response to that was quite remarkable. So here's the thing, regardless of what your history is with Officer Akers, your, your intense hate caused you to flip him off and then you committed a traffic violation, okay? And going on about your day and not worried about flicking people off or anything like that, none of this would have happened. I know, but... Did this... Oh, I did? No, I didn't. Let me get... Let me get your signature on. So... That's not pleading guilty. That just promises to take care of that ticket, okay? None of it ever is good on those automated ones. Okay. So here's the thing, right? Had had you just gone on about your day, right? However, instead of just letting Brittany go and teaching the officer a law lesson, the sergeant kept on talking to her and almost made her cry. So your your intense hatred is causing you to do other things that is that is drawing attention to you. the situation with you. I watched the video. I, saw, I know everything that occurred. Okay. I know about the court stuff, everything that occurred. If Officer Akers had done anything wrong, he wouldn't be here right now. Right? That's a hundred percent true. It is. So, right. I get it. That's your first amendment. If you want to flip people off, but what it did is it caused you to create a, to create a hazard into a traffic infraction right in front of an officer. Right. Citation, we're all complete, so you're good to go whenever you want. But my advice is to move on, right? Because you clinging on to this is causing more problems, right? It just did right now. Correct? I understand that bad things will happen to me if I. Brittany sobbingly replied to Sergeant Scott, but somehow this bad encounter ended with a citation. Luckily, she didn't have to be transported to jail just for carrying out his First Amendment right. Okay. You, can, you can choose to be defined by the, your past, or you can decide what you want to do. Right? That's, but if you choose to be defined by what happened to you in the past, then you will always continue to be that person. Right? Do you understand what I'm saying? That's... Regardless of what y'all's history is, you need to move along with it. Right? If Sergeant Scott didn't appear on the scene, would this encounter have ended this peacefully? The sergeant saved the woman from arrest, but you will be surprised to see how this next cop stood up to protect this man's rights. I don't mean anybody no harm. I don't have my gun on me. My What's gun's in the car. Intentions? Huh? Can I ask you what your intentions are? My intentions is, I just want, again, I don't see these every day, so I stopped to take pictures. <laughs> On January 15, 2020, investigator David Gear was filming outside Odell Oil Company in Belton, South Carolina. He stayed away from the trespassing area and only filmed the place from the outside, even though there were signs saying no trespassing or filming. However, this day of exploring was about to take a swift turn. The whole facility, well, both of them really, get some information on them. I, I, I'm sorry, brother, I can't hear you. A whole lot of information, honestly. A whole lot of it. Say what? We can't just give out our information. 
Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I didn't have any questions about it towards y'all. I can kind of find out what I need out, out this way. Who are you? I'm an operator here. Operator here. What's your name? Uh, so that's irrelevant. Uh, I understand that. Yeah. Cav, your name? That's irrelevant. Okay. Well, I was just asking. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. I'm we'll gonna, call the cop. Yeah, I'm going to have to. Go. Okay, that's fine. Picture. That's fine. Right. That's fine. I, private property. Yeah. Inside the fence, this. Yeah. What, what you need pictures for? You said what I need pictures for? Mm -hmm. Well, I can't say it right now because it's not published. But you can call the people. That's fine. Okay. I'll be along the way somewhere. I'll be along the road somewhere. I, I didn't drive. I'm a step ahead of everybody. Two people from that oil company had some serious issues from Mr. Gear recording on public property. They didn't even bother to introduce themselves, but started warning him not to film here. David was nice enough to respond to them politely. I'll be along here somewhere. I'm not leaving. I'm just walking. I promise I'll be in the area. And when they come out, can y'all come back out, please? Thank you. So he didn't want to give his name. He didn't want to give his name. But we're here. And they say it's private property. But that is a public utility right here and there. But they're going to, they're going to call the police. So we're going to hang out until they call them. See how this goes. Mr. Gear smartly stated a South Carolina law, saying trespassing only applies within fenced area. The two men, however, decided to call someone on David, and the way this man treated him was shocking. Send somebody out here to talk to me, all right? Yeah, that's about to start raining. I wonder if he's gonna get out the vehicle. It's finna start raining, which is the crazy part. So I'm actually going to get soaking wet. But I'm, again, I'm in Belt, South Carolina, at the oil company, on a road here. 33 feet from the center line of the road. I have their property line um, in my phone and there are public utilities all right here. Some are in their property, some are right here, which is outside of the fence and their trespassing signs are on the fence, which is beyond me, it's very beyond me. I'm like, brother, how you doing? Just filming. Just filming and I'm trying to figure out why they're following me around here and I can't figure it out. Well, kind of. But well, that's fine. But you know, you're allowed to take my picture also. That, that's that's totally fine. Now whether or not you can get it, that's uh, that's between you and your camera. But um, that guy here has been following me around, and then you came out here to take my picture. It, if you turn your phone the other way, you get a better picture. Turn it sideways. No, no, turn your phone sideways. That, that that's right. Uh, I can't. I can't. But I'm trying to figure out why y'all to follow me. It's like nobody here understands the rights that I have granted to me under the First Amendment. That's what's crazy. You know, this is all public property right here. Yeah, no, this is state property. Which is public. State property is tax funded, which makes it public. So my tax dollars, your tax dollars pay for it. I mean, it's suspicious. I mean, that's fine. Uh, and again, I told the people over here to call the police, that's fine. I don't mind talking to them. But you see that public utility right there? If I want to walk all the way to that pole and record this property, I can because that's because the city put that there. So that city property is I don't mean anybody no harm. I don't have my gun on me. My What's gun's in the car. Intentions? Huh? Can I ask you what your intentions are? My intentions is, I just want, again, I don't see these every day. So I stopped to take pictures of all these oil, of all these big oil um, wells here because I, I, I don't see them every day. But it's like people are freaking out about it over a camera. Well, it's, it's kind of a touchy. But y'all have cameras all over y'all facility. No, we do. Uh, so how is my camera any different than your camera? I have no problem with that. I don't. I'd be more than glad to talk to him. Okay. Thank you for coming out. Yes, Thank you. Mr. Gear claimed that he was on public property, and GIS data supported this too. In South Carolina, the government can control areas in different ways. Utility poles on government land don't always mean public property, but the oil company employees decided to call the cops on him. Public easement here, and I was taking pictures this way, that way, and back here, and they freaked out. They completely freaked out about it, and they was like, well, I'm gonna call the police. I said, that's fine. I, I don't mind talking because there's no crime being committed here. They freaked the hell out, these guys here. That, that guy right there. Hey, come over here, buddy. Yeah, you. Come here, please. I just need you to inform him of the First Amendment that I'm allowed to record here in public, and I can be on my way. That, that's all I need from you, Officer Parker. Yeah. Can you please just inform him of my rights through the First Amendment, and I'm on my way. I'm sure y'all have been pumped, prompt on it because we sued Anderson a, a long time ago. I don't mean any hurt, harm, or danger by it, but these guys here completely freaked the hell out, and I don't know why.
I just need him to be informed of my First Amendment right, and I can be on my way. I'm gonna come across the road because I gotta get it on film that you told him for my protection. Deputy Parker calmly listened to what Mr. Gear had to say. She understood all the First Amendment rights Mr. Gear had at that time and decided to teach some of those to the people working there. I told y'all I was coming back, buddy. I ain't wanna be rude. I just want you to be informed and hear from someone else that I'm completely allowed to do what I'm doing. So, with him taking pictures, it's not a problem. Sure. Can you actually put video on me? I'm allowed to. I, I tried to tell you that so we can be cordial. The first time you saw me, you yeah, and I was you cordial. I was not about what you doing. No, I told you that I'm allowed to do what I'm doing. It's it's all on camera. I can run it back. It's all on camera. You'll see it on YouTube later. I promise. I'm allowed to do what I do. That's all it is. And I wanted her to come tell you because I didn't want you to think I was being a jerk about it. It's completely legal, and y'all have to understand that while in public, you can be filmed. There's no expectation of privacy at all, buddy. At all. What, what can we? Build a brick wall. Can't do anything about it. I tried to tell you that, but y'all wasted resources. Deputy Parker claimed that Mr. Gear's filming likely falls under First Amendment protection. She educated the oil company on trespassing laws and showed commitment to the First Amendment. How you doing, brother? I'm doing well, sir. How about I'm you? all right, thank you. I'm David, by the way. Hey, David. Thank you. Nice job, man. It is. That's why I'm out here, actually. I'm about to go jump on my bike. I just tried to help these two gentlemen out here. And they didn't want to understand me, so they called this sweet officer right here yeah. and wasted resources when they could have asked me the same question. And I gave them the same answer, but they didn't want to listen to me. So now they're on the internet looking like fools because I tried to tell them. <laughs> and those weren't my intentions. I tried to walk away, but then I saw her pulling up and I figured that they called and wasted her sweet time out here. Sorry you had to come out here, Officer Parker. You're fine. Just do me a favor. Don't go behind Oh, I won't. I won't. Uh, and, and I told him, I have their property line on my phone. I checked the GIS survey. As long as I'm well within public property, it's a public utility pole. They're, they're, they're no trespassing prior notice starts on the other side of that fence. I have no plans of breaching their property at all. None. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for coming out. All right. Yes, it was a pleasure having you here. Fellas, I'm sorry about the misunderstanding, but at least now you understand. All right. Deputy Parker did a fantastic job in ensuring that the person's rights and calmly dealt with the situation while also teaching the employees a law lesson. Well, that brings us to the end of this video. Today, we got to see cases where ignorant law enforcement officers were taught a lesson by the good one. Particularly concerning was the first case where a tyrant cop was about to take a person to jail just because she exercised her First Amendment right. Fortunately, the sergeant arrived on time and taught him a lesson. I believe that cops must have more knowledge on the law and must have thicker skin. If you agree with me, please consider showing your support by liking this video and also make sure to subscribe to stay informed about future cases like these. Also, if you enjoyed this video, check out the next video here.